Hey, bruh. Captain Hardtackle here. I football. Not only do I football, I also G.I. Joe. Now, you may not think football and G.I. Joe go together, but I say you're wrong. Football and G.I. Joe go together like HGH and a protein shake. Stay tuned for the video, and I'll show you how football and G.I. Joe are best buds. All right, everybody, wind sprints. Let's go, let's go, come on, let's go. Go, 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 go. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It was a nice week off for me, but now it's time to get back to G.I. Joe Toys. Before I get started, I need to give a code name to a patron, Justin Luby. To commemorate the subject of this review, I think he should have a football sounding code name. Justin, your code name is Jock Hardiron. Thank you for your support. Wow, the Belomo Guide does not have nice things to say about Captain Gridiron, the most oft-criticized and maligned figure in the entire G.I. Joe line. Many collectors abhor the toy's colorful yellow and green quarterback-themed uniform. The hate for this figure is recorded in the Belomo Guide for posterity. Well, I can understand it. This figure was chosen by patrons, and I suspect it was chosen because it is one of the most criticized figures in the line. This figure is all about football. And I mean all about football. I love American football. The game includes strategy, deception, planning, coordination, teamwork, and yes, brute force. Every play in the game is like a giant chess match in which all of the pieces move simultaneously. The strategy changes depending on how much time is left on the clock, the score, the individual matchups, and even the chances of the team making it to the postseason. If you think American football is just a bunch of large guys bumping into each other, well, it's more than that. For all of these reasons, a football-themed G.I. Joe should appeal to me. But it's possible to have too much of a good thing. A theme can be overdone and beaten into the ground. Does Captain Gridiron take the football theme too far? Let's talk about it. HCC 788 presents Captain Gridiron. <laughs> This is Captain Gridiron, G.I. Joe's hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist from 1990. This figure was first available in 1990 and was only available in 1990. It was discontinued for 1991. This is the only version of Captain Gridiron in the vintage era. This figure was designed by Dave Hassel for Hasbro. Early designs had numbers on the chest, like a football jersey, which would have represented the numbers he wore in college football. Gridiron is a reference to gridiron football, more commonly known as American football. The name refers to the use of lines and hash marks, which make the playing field look like it was branded with a gridiron. Captain Gridiron is a sport themed Joe. G.I. Joe had several sport-themed characters throughout the vintage years. In 1982, there was Steeler. His name is probably a reference to the Pittsburgh football Steelers. In 1985, there was Bazooka, who was wearing a football jersey. In 1986, there was Sergeant Slaughter, who was a character from professional wrestling. In 1987, Red Dog, one of Sergeant Slaughter's renegades, wore a football jersey, and his code name is a football reference. In 1987, there was The Fridge, who was based on a real American football player. In 1988, there was Hardball, a baseball-themed Joe, wearing a baseball jersey and cap. There are other Joes who had sports in their background or were connected to sports in some way, but they weren't necessarily sport-themed. Did Cobra have sport-themed figures? Well, sort of, but definitely not as many as G.I. Joe. In 1987, there was Big Boa, the boxer, and in 1989, the Frag Viper came with Hylai equipment. Prototype names for this figure included Captain Lionbacher, a play on the word linebacker, a football term, and Captain Hard Tackle. 
Both of those names are terrible, given the options Captain Gridiron was the best choice. With Captain Gridiron, they leaned in on the sport theme. He isn't wearing a numbered jersey like Bazooka. In fact, he isn't wearing a jersey at all. Instead, they took his enthusiasm for football quite literally. We'll discuss more when we look at his accessories. Captain Gridiron is a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist, probably because football is a sport of unarmed contact, which you could call hand-to-hand -hand combat. His specialty is negated by the fact that he comes with weapons. A lot of them. Big weapons. The G.I. Joe Collector's Book, published by Hasbro in 1993, uh, in the 1990 section, lists Captain Gridiron's specialty as combat leader. Captain Gridiron appeared in the catalog insert that came in G.I. Joe vehicles in 1990, along with the other figures that were released that year. But there's something different about the picture of Captain Gridiron in the catalog. The missiles on his machine gun missile launcher are yellow instead of the light gray as they were on the production toy. Let's take a look at Captain Gridiron's accessories, starting with his helmet. Uh, his helmet is a two-piece accessory. It has a visor. The visor is removable. Uh, it is clear plastic, and this is reminiscent of the clear visors that came on figures in 1982. Uh, but this visor is a bit thinner. It's not an exact copy of those. Uh, we didn't get as many of these visors later in the G.I. Joe line, so this is a bit of a throwback. The helmet is green, a nice color of green. It is hard plastic, not the soft plastic you would hope for on a helmet like this that is supposed to fit over the entire head. It has a a face mask that is reminiscent of an American football helmet, and it has knobs on the side for connecting the visor. The visor is flexible enough to just slip on those knobs, and you can pop it back on the helmet with no problem at all. Uh, this helmet is not bad. It's an appropriate color, and the visor is just a nice extra bonus. I like it. His next accessory is the pistol. I have it wedged behind the backpack just because his hands are kind of full. That's not really where it goes. Uh, but the pistol is light gray in color. It has a suppressor. I don't believe it's based on a real-world design, but the design is not bad. It looks a little stylized, and the color is a bit lighter than I would prefer, but overall it's not bad. Next we get to the big one, what the card contents call a machine gun with missiles. If I can get it out of his hand, I'll show it to you uh, without dropping one of the missiles, which is a tricky thing to do. I want to be careful not to strain the thumb or the plastic on the accessory when getting it out of his hands, and I'm trying to do it without dropping one of the missiles off. These missiles fall off way too easily. Anyway, this thing is called a machine gun, uh, even though it doesn't look like a machine gun. It's in light gray, the same color as the pistol. It has a scope and a grip, no butt stock, and a big foregrip way out of the front of the barrel. It has four peg-on missiles all the way around the barrel, and I'm going to go ahead and pull these off because they're going to fall off anyway. Uh, I will show you the missiles in a moment, but let's take them off so we can look at the so-called machine gun. The long, thin barrel has tabs, top, bottom, left, and right. They are shallow tabs for shallow slots, and you know what that means. It means those missiles will fall off very easily. There's a huge foregrip that sticks out to the left side of the barrel, and it will fit in the action figure's hand, as you saw, but it's rather awkward. The figure can only aim the gun to the side when he's gripping both the grip and the foregrip. You can have the figure hold the machine gun one-handed, so he can also hold the pistol, so technically he can hold all of his accessories at the same time, but this looks equally as awkward. Let's talk about these missiles. They are light gray, they have two slots so they can attach the machine gun. They are otherwise quite plain. There are four of them, and they are all identical. These missiles seem like like they ought to be a nice bonus for the machine gun, but in fact they are quite fiddly and they just don't stay on well. They're very frustrating. They all peg on in the same way, top, left, right, and bottom, uh, but because the pegs are shallow, uh, they will not stay on well. It's very easy to knock them off just by lightly bumping the accessory and they will fall off. Because they are so small, 
uh, they can be easily lost. Um, this is not a spring-loaded missile launcher. Uh, I guess we weren't quite in the spring-loaded missile launcher era when this figure was released, um, but it's big enough it could have been a spring-loaded missile launcher. Instead, you just have missiles that don't launch, they just fall off. I am not a fan of this whole weapons system. It is big and clunky and awkward. I suppose the missiles are supposed to evoke the idea of throwing a football, but he has other accessories that are more directly analogous to that. He came with three football grenades, and that is exactly what it sounds like. It is a grenade shaped like a football. Uh, they have safety levers that serve as handles, so they will fit in the action figure's hand, whereas most G.I. Joe grenades did not, so that's a nice bonus for these. You can place the football grenade in the figure's hand, or you can peg the grenade on the figure. The figure has two pegs on his left leg for the slot on the football grenades, so you can peg the grenades on his leg, and there is another peg on the backpack for a third football grenade. Some examples of other grenades in G.I. Joe include 1991 Big Ben. He came with two black grenades, and he couldn't really hold his grenades exactly. The best he could do is balance the grenade in his hand upside down, but not very well. At least he came with a pouch so he could store his grenades in there. In 1991, we had the Cobra Frag Viper. He came with some small black grenades, and he could fit a grenade in his weapon or peg them on his backpack. Even though we have already looked at a lot of accessories, we're not even close to done. Captain Gridiron came with two blocking pads uh, that clipped onto his upper arm, uh, but they do not stay in place very well. They will clip on like so, but they tend to swivel around and sometimes block the elbow. I suspect a lot of collectors don't like the yellow color. Since the figure is football themed, I guess these are supposed to be like football pads but they don't really look like football pads. A better example of football pads would be the shoulder pad accessory that came with 1988 Road Pig, a removable accessory, which I guess you could put on Captain Gridiron. You can fit these blocker pads down on the forearm like elbow pads, but they don't fit on super well and they will tend to slide off. The final accessory is the backpack, a nicely colored olive drab green backpack. Uh, with a bedroll and some straps and buckles and almost nothing else. It's very plain. It does have a peg, as we have seen, for pegging on the football grenade. Uh, be careful about putting pressure on that peg when you reattach the grenade. That could break off. This is an amazingly plain backpack. It is a no-frills backpack, but I like the color and it holds an extra accessory, so it's really not too bad. The upside is he comes with a lot of accessories. The downside is the accessories are cumbersome. The color choices aren't great, except for the green. The green looks good, but the yellow and the light gray, I would have gone with some other choices. The most prominent piece, the machine gun with the missiles, is the biggest problem. That's my least favorite. It can be frustrating to keep the missiles on and to get the figure to hold it. Because of the many, many accessories this figure comes with, it can be a little difficult to complete, but the figure and the accessories are common enough that you should be able to complete one with a little effort. Let's take a look at the articulation on Captain Gridiron. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures well before 1991, so he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed him to swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color on Captain Gridiron, starting with his head. And his head has light brown hair, almost blonde. Uh, he has light brown eyebrows and light brown eyes. He has a sharp jaw. Excellent sculpting on this head. 
This is a good head. It, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I like it a lot. The chest is surprisingly plain given the detail on the rest of the figure. It's in a green color, a dark green with maybe a slightly bluish tint. Uh, it has some clasps down the front and some zippered pockets. The only paint application on the chest and back is for the green collar of his undershirt. It looks like he borrowed one of Scoop's sweater vests. On his arms he has long sleeves and the sleeves have a ridged knit pattern on them. That's very nice. The sleeves are light green with a dark green digital camouflage pattern, and he has dark green fingerless gloves. These arms are really nice. They are well done, both in color and sculpting. The waist piece has a couple belts in light gray. They match the color of the accessories. That's not my favorite color, but they did do a good job of matching the colors to the accessories. The belts are very well sculpted sculpted with pouches on the sides and the front. Uh, the lower belt slings down a little bit lower on the right side and connects to a strap that goes to his pistol holster. On his legs he has yellow trousers and this is probably what bothers a lot of collectors and why this figure is so maligned. That yellow color really stands out. The legs are probably supposed to look like part of a football uniform and there are football teams that wear yellow pants like this such such as the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. But of course, this is totally inappropriate for combat. On his right leg, he has a light gray pistol holster with a black pistol and an unpainted strap that goes around his right thigh. On his left leg, he has pegs for the football grenades. We've already looked at those. On his lower legs, he has light green boot covers with a dark green digital camouflage pattern matching the pattern on his arms. Uh, and then he has light gray boots. I will say in this figure's favor, the sculpting is good. It's really good. And most of the colors are good too. The yellow stands out, as does the light gray. Now, sometimes the U.S. Army football team wears gold pants, but I don't think that's what this is supposed to represent. That's not gold. That's just very yellow. I really think it's the colors that put a lot of people off. The sculpting is quite good, but I can't judge a figure here only on the sculpting. The color choices are part of the grade too. Let's take a look at Captain Gridiron's file card. The file card has his faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Captain Gridiron here. And we can see from the artwork, the helmet has a digital camouflage pattern, but the helmet on the figure is unpainted. His code name is Captain Gridiron. He is the hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist. His file name is Terence Leiden. This figure has so many allusions to football. I thought thought maybe the name was a football reference, but I wasn't able to find anything. Primary military specialty, hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist, secondary military specialty infantry, birthplace Evergreen Park, Illinois, and his grade is 03, and that is a captain. This top paragraph says Captain Gridiron was quarterback of the West Point football team and graduated in the top 10 of his class. West Point refers to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, a four-year federal service school. Graduate are commissioned as second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. The U.S. Army does have a football team at West Point currently called the Black Knights, formerly called the Cadets. It can be said in his favor that he passed up an appointment to the U.S. Army War College for a conventional infantry command at the company level. The U.S. Army War College is exactly what it sounds like. It's a graduate level school for senior ranking Army officers. But it's not possible for Captain Gridiron to have passed up an appointment there because they only accept applicants that have reached the rank of major and have already completed the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College. Captain Gridiron has not reached the rank of major yet, unless they're implying he was a major and was demoted. It was his determination to be where the action is that brought him to the attention of the G.I. Joe organization. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, The other G.I. Joes were a bit put off by this West Pointer when he first showed up, but he turned out to be bearable to the point that nobody tried to lose him on his first mission. Bearable? just bearable. This here where it says nobody tried to lose him on his first mission and lose is kind of in quotes. 
This sounds like a reference to fragging. Fragging refers to the killing of a superior officer by the soldiers under his command. This happened sometimes when the officer was perceived as being reckless or incompetent. Such an officer could be discreetly eliminated in the field, often by a grenade accident, before he could lead the men under his command to their deaths. It's a little disturbing to think the G.I. Joe team would employ such a practice. In fact, if he would only stop trying so hard to be likable and put a halt to his John Wayne, in parentheses classic Hollywood tough guy imitation, the final card has to tell us who John Wayne is. They might let him play quarterback at the annual G.I. Joe fish fry football game. They might let him. Mind you, I said might. Roadblock has a strong arm. There will have to be a tryout. The final card makes him sound kind of pathetic. He tries hard to be liked. He annoys people with his John Wayne impression. He's still living in his college football days. A coach would have put me in fourth quarter. We'd have been state champions, no doubt. Most of these file cards were adapted from dossiers written by Larry Hama, and I believe this is one that he wrote. It has a lot of real military references in it. The dossiers had to be edited down to fit on the card. I have to wonder if something important was cut out of this one. Did they mean to make him sound like such a loser who is barely tolerated by his teammates? Looking at how Captain Gridiron was used in G.I. Joe media, he made no appearances in the comic book series published by Marvel Comics. He was in a video game. He was a character in the G.I. Joe game for the NES by Taxan. Captain Gridiron had most of his impact in the animated series, and he appeared in the second animated series, the one produced by Deke. He first appeared in the episode United We Stand, but he's best known for a different episode, the episode titled Pigskin Commandos. Pigskin, for the non-American audience, is slang for an American football, the football itself that people play with in the game. Back in 82, I used to be able to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. Pigskin Commandos is a bizarre story about G.I. Joe and Cobra playing a football game with tanks. It starts with Sergeant Slaughter visiting his sister, who looks like Bridget Nielsen on steroids. Sergeant Slaughter gets captured by Cobra. I won't tell you how, you'll have to see it for yourself. Cobra decides to use Sergeant Slaughter as bait to goad G.I. Joe into playing a football game. This is Cobra's plan to capture Captain Gridiron. The football game starts relatively normal. I say relatively because it is insane, but it's slightly less insane than the rest of the episode. The players wear all their usual uniforms, which includes firearms and grenades. This game of football could get deadly very quickly. Cobra decides to cheat and use tanks. That's right, tanks as football players. But G.I. Joe was expecting this kind of trickery, and they had their own tanks ready. So both sides play a football game with tanks. As crazy as that sounds, not very much of the episode is dedicated to it. With a premise that outlandish, you would expect it to be the climax of the story. Instead, the episode spins off into car chases and airplane chases, and is just too loony for words. You have to see it for yourself. Looking at Captain Gridiron overall, is this the worst and most hated figure in the entire G.I. Joe toy line? No way! We've seen Lobata Max and we've seen the Ice Cream Soldier. Captain Gridiron ain't that bad. I can see why some fans would not like this figure. The football theme is taken way too far. The colors are hard to look at. The premise is silly, and the execution is also kind of silly. I don't hate it that much. I'm going to put it in the middle tier the lower part of the middle tier. My biggest criticism isn't the colors, although the yellow is garish. My problem is with the accessories. The helmet and backpack are fine. The pistol is not bad. The rest of them are annoying. The missiles fall off the gun way too easily, and they are too hard to put back on. The football grenades are just goofy, and the arm pads I just don't get it. The file card does not paint a nice picture of Captain Gridiron. His teammates seem to barely tolerate him. He has annoying personality traits. Were they trying to make people hate this guy? Well, I don't hate this figure. Some of the figure, like the head sculpt and the camouflage, I really like. This is far from the best figure, 
but very far from the worst. Really, a football-themed G.I. Joe is not a crazy idea. In fact, there really are football-themed G.I. Joes. Here's one. Pat Tillman was a safety for the NFL Arizona Cardinals. He was drafted in 1998 and played his entire career with the Cardinals. He even turned down a lucrative contract offer from the St. Louis Rams to stay in Arizona. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center and the Pentagon were struck by airplanes hijacked by agents of the terrorist group Al-Qaeda. Another airplane was forced to crash in Pennsylvania, killing all aboard. The attacks shook the nation. The entire nation mourned. You didn't have to be in New York or Washington to feel the impact and know what it meant. Much has been said about the country's reaction to the attacks. If Pat Tillman were here, he'd have plenty to say about it himself. That's not a debate for this channel. Pat Tillman decided he couldn't stand by and watch. He chose to act. In 2002, he turned down a three-year, $3.6 million contract with the Cardinals and enlisted in the Army. Pat's brother, Kevin, also enlisted, giving up a chance to play professional baseball. Tillman completed Ranger School at Fort Benning in November 2003 and was deployed to Afghanistan. In April of 2004, he was killed by what was reported at the time to be enemy combatants. It was later revealed to be a friendly fire situation. Pat Tillman was a G.I. Joe in the true sense of the word. That's what a G.I. Joe is, an American soldier. He was a good football player and could have had a successful career, but he gave it up for something he believed was more important. He was a real football-themed G.I. Joe. There is more to Pat Tillman's story, including his thoughts about the war and the controversy surrounding his death. It is a story worth reading. That was my review of Captain Gridiron. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Jock Hardiron, for your support. If you like G.I. Joe and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the notification bell, giving this video a thumbs up on YouTube, and sharing it with your friends. You can find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Thank you to all my patrons. You make these videos possible possible. If you like these videos and you'd like to support the channel in that way, please consider checking out my Patreon. You can find out how to decode the secret messages you see in these videos, and you might even get a code name like Jock Hardiron. Last month we looked at a lot of 80s stuff and it was great, but we have to pay for that by covering a lot from the 90s. Next week we're going to look at a 90s vehicle, and we're going to return to a sub-team that we haven't looked at in a long time. I'll see you all next week and until until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Hey bruh, Captain Hard Tackle here. I football, and sometimes when I football, my junk itches. That's when I use Yojo Jock Itch Treatment. It's by the makers of Yojo Cola. Well, it is Yojo Cola, but you put it on your junk.